Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to go through the digital symbols that you need to understand for when you're dealing with these circuits that we're going to play with. So let's jump on in. So what are digital systems? Well, basically it's exactly the same as what we've done before, but we're going to do it with actual circuits. And the idea is imagine water flowing through these circuits and if the water can make it, the, the different object can turn on. So for example, the lamp, if there's water coming through from this power source, it will um, activate. So digital systems concerned with the digital signals that have come in and they can take a whole heap of different forms. What we usually use are logic gates when we're working with these binary signals and they're made up with switches, so little on and offers um, that we're going to have, the input which is the power to turn the thing going and then the output which is the lamp that shows it. So if we had the binary quantity with two different states with a little lamp like this, so we've got the battery here, a switch there and then a lamp, we can either be, um, the switch can either be turned on or open, which then um, turns the light off, or we can close the switch, which then makes the um, circuit or the water flow, which then turns it on. Another way of thinking about this, if we use good old binary, if it's zero, the lamp is zero. If the state is one, it then becomes one. So with the two switches in series, this is where it gets a little bit different. For the water to flow, there is only one time when it will whirl, if both the switches are down. So if one of them is up, the, the water can't flow. If both of them are up, it won't work. Which hopefully you've picked up is the same as an AND gate. So when both are down, it will work. If they're not, it won't. And this is what series means. So if switch one was zero, zero, the lamp isn't on. If it's zero, one, it's um, still not on. If one, zero, it means it's still off. And then if they're both down, you, you will then get a water flow happening, which is kind of cool. So that's how the lamp works. If two switches are in parallel, same sort of thing. So you've got switch one, switch two with the lamp. If it's zero, zero, you get a zero. If it's zero, one, you can actually get an, a flow state because there's one way for the, the water to get through to the lamp. Okay. If you get one, zero, again, there's another way. And then if you've got one, one, there's one way, which is kind of cool. If you've got three switches in series, hopefully you're starting to pick up on the pattern. This is still an AND gate. But in this case, there's three different inputs. So if they're all off, it's zero. If there's one on, it's one. The only time that it becomes one is this final state where it's one, one. If you have three switches in parallel, it's the exact opposite. The only time this will not work if all switches are set to zero. So in this case here, if it's zero, zero, it's set to zero. This is one, this is one, this is one. This is one, and the last one is one, because the water can flow. And hopefully that's giving you another insight into how AND and all gates work. This one's a little bit more complex. Just pause the video and see how you go with the different inputs. Cool, so hopefully you picked up with zero, 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 it becomes zero. With zero, zero, one, still zero. Zero, one, zero, zero, and zero, one, one, becomes zero. Because if that switch one is not down, the thing's not working, then, if you've got one on, if you've got zero, zero, that's still zero. But now, if you've got one, zero, one, the thing can flow through, this can flow through, and then this guy can also flow through. With logic gates, these are the symbols that you need to learn off by heart. Now, the easiest way to remember them is I remember the Star Trek logo for OR, AND, D makes a D, so AND gate's got a D, and the NOT gate is just a triangle. If you remember those three, everything else sort of connects to that. So not, um, sorry, not gates is the triangle with a circle in the front. As soon as that circle in, is on the front, it means it's an inverter or it flips it. So the way logic gates work, the graphical representations of the different Boolean operators that you need to learn, they're easy to learn using series and parallel notation because that, they're just way easier to do. And you basically convert these circuits into truth tables. So the operations that you have is not, and, NAND, OR, NOR, and XOR, and then NEXOR. Those are all the ones that you need to sort of know off by heart. You'll then be given a truth table, or you might be given a circuit, and you've got to inter um, go in between the two of them. So more on logic gates. The NOT gate, like I said, a triangle with a little circle. The OR looks like the Star Trek logo on the side, and the NAND and gate is basically a D. These are all the building blocks that you need to know. And then these help derive all the other gates that you can build, which is kind of cool. 
So there's a huge truth table with all the different symbols and everything that you can see. Basically not in this um, system has a hat over the top of it, which means that's the knot of it. Um, and then if you have a long bar over the top, it means it's the knot as if it was wrapped in brackets. The three basic gates, they're, they're exactly the same as what we've done before. There's a cool video there for you to play around with. Um, this is really cool logically. So the way this works, it allows you to build a quick little circuit. So if I wanna see how an AND gate and an OR gate works, you can literally build it here. So I'm gonna have a toggle switch there, toggle switch there, and I'm gonna put an AND gate in. And I'm gonna get that connected to a light. And then you literally drop, and drag that in, drag that in, and then connect that up. So what you should see if they're both off, shouldn't work. If that one's on, doesn't turn on. That one's on, doesn't turn on. But if I turn them both on, boom, the light changes on. So then I can actually delete that and I'll put an OR gate in so you can just see the difference. I'll connect that in, connect that guy. And then now you should see if they're both off, it's not gonna turn on, it's gonna turn on, gonna turn on. And then if they're both on, it turns on. So that's a pretty cool little program to play around with uh, called Logic Clean. So not gate, basically means not, it flips it. So not, zeros become ones, ones become zero. And the Boolean expression, you'll see a little hat over the top of them. So there's the circuit, you've done the AND. The OR gate works exactly the same. Um, sometimes you'll see the Boolean mathematicians say it's a plus symbol, because it's similar-ish to plus. And um, have a go with the buffer gate there. So a buffer gate, really simple, it just means the input gives you the output. You then have the derived gates that are all based on those. So NAND gates and so on. You can play around with that. There's a cool video there that you can have a look at. And then you can also build an XOR gate. So an XOR gate looks exactly the same as an OR gate, except it has a line behind it. And XOR, like we should know, is exclusive OR. So XOR gate looks like that. And it's only true if they're both true. And we use the little sniper symbol to represent XOR. So how do we make the not version? It's really simple. Basically, whatever gate you want, you jam a little circle on the front, and then that changes the way that the gate looks. So normal, and then the not version is with the little circle at the front. So you can build an XOR gate just by dropping and dragging it in, in logically, which should hopefully help. Um, a XOR gate, basically XOR with a huge bar over the top of it, and then that's the same there. Then you've got the NAND gate. Um, they also use the dot notation, which means times and then that connects it there. NOR gate, same thing again. So have a go with that, play around with logically. The more you play around with this, the easier it is. Um, there's some cool circuits that you can build. There's a whole heap of different inputs as well. So you can um, put a push button, you can have a constant, you have a little clock, and then also you can have the, alf, um, the hexadecimal code punch out here with this little four bit digit, which is kind of cool. So the more you play around with that, the easier it is to sort of get your head in the game of how these circuits work. So that's it from me. Hopefully that's giving you some insight um, into how Logically sort of looks and how you can play around with it. Um, the, the circuits with it are really cool because you can drop and drag in the circuits and see what they do. The more you play around with this, the better it becomes. So that's it from me um, from Steam It With Steve. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Give us some comments down below if you did enjoy. And don't forget to like and subscribe as it does help with that YouTube algorithm. Okay, that's it for me. Adios.